I went to Palm Springs as if nothing had happened. On Highway 111 in the cold desert, a massive rainbow appeared, its arc intact. The girl and boy I bought were in their late teens and the negotiations had gone smoothly and an offer was made and then accepted. The girl was impossibly beautiful. The Bible Belt, Memphis. And the boy was from Australia and had modeled for Abercrombie and Fitch. And they had come to LA to make it, but it wasn't happening for them yet. I told him to walk around naked and I didn't care how absurd or deranged I seemed. I watched geckos dart through the rock garden while the girl and boy sat naked in front of the giant flat screen TV in the living room watching a remake of The Hills Have Eyes. The ranch house was in the movie colony and had walls that were cream colored and mirrored and pillars that lined the pool shaped like a baby grand piano and raked gravel blanketed the yard and small planes flew above it in the dry air before landing at the airport nearby. At night, the moon would hang over the silver-rimmed desert and the streets were empty and the girl and boy would get stoned by the fire pit. And sometimes dogs could be heard barking over the wind thrashing the palm trees as I pounded into the girl and the house was infested with crickets and the boy's mouth was warm. But I didn't really feel anything until I hit him, always panting, my eyes gazing at the steam rising from the pool at dawn. And the human skull in the plastic bag was a prop watching us from the nightstand in the bedroom, and sometimes I made the girl kiss the skull. And her eyes were in a trance, and she gazed at me as if I didn't exist. And then I'd tell the boy to beat the girl, and I watched as he threw her to the floor, and then I told him to do it again and the sound of crickets kept playing over the scene. The sky looked scoured, remarkable. A cylinder of light formed at the base of the mountains, rising upward. At the end of the weekend, the girl admitted to me that she had become a believer as we sat in the shade of the towering hills. The crossing place is what the girl called them. And when I asked her what she meant, she said, this is where the devil lives and she was pointing at the mountains with a trembling hand, but she was smiling now as the boy kept diving into the pool and the welts glistened on his tan back from where I'd beaten him. The devil was calling out to her, but it didn't scare the girl anymore because she wanted to talk to him now. And in the house was a copy of the book that had been written about us over 20 years ago, and its neon cover glared from where it rested on the glass coffee table until it was found floating in the pool in the house in the movie colony beneath the towering mountains. Water bloated the sound of crickets everywhere, and then the camera tracks across the desert until we start fading out on the yellowing sky. <laughs>